ahead. I'm kind of off on a tangent here. Go ahead and uh, oh, yeah, let's see. What's, what's going on? What's the see next what's question? Left. Let me see something we didn't really cover. I was just going to say um, that thought made me think of like what would a uh, an earlier, less evolved PMR look like, like an Atari level PMR. You know? <laughs> yes, one of those that didn't survive, maybe. Yeah, in, uh, big, you know, ev evolution, or maybe maybe our ancestor. Yes, yeah, real real choppy. A big pile but, of of really crude. PMRs <laughs> and PMR Could be. beings. But see, it has to be fine enough for us to have interactions that are meaningful to us and feedback that's meaningful to us. So if we're unpleasant, we can maybe tell that just in the way somebody else's face changes. You see, that's feedback to us. We don't have to get hit in the face, you know, with, you know, with, you know, be, get slapped or something to know that they didn't didn't like it or that we have just done something that that hurt them right. we get it from very subtle cues so sure. the, the the more refined the game is actually the more effective the game is right because things it doesn't have be to be so less, right it, it can be more subtle it can it can nuanced. be less crude so the actual game play going in requires subtlety it's not just the graphics like we need subtlety in the graphics right we need subtlety you know in the in the graphics yes but it's because we need subtlety in the interaction ah, that's fascinating we need yeah, we need subtlety in interaction is why we need so much subtlety in the graphics. If the interaction was really overt, it wouldn't require much of you to learn the lesson. It'd be a really obvious lesson, just like, right. oh, hit you. Well, if, right, you get hit, and then what happens? Instead of learning anything, your ego reacts to that. Right. How dare you hit me? You know? <laughs> and you hit them back, and pretty soon you got to fight, right? So that's what happens. Whereas if you just see them kind of, you might think about what you did. Well, Gee, wonder why they're acting like that. Oh, I can see how they might have taken that. Right, I see. Okay. I, see a little I need to be a little more sensitive to that because that person is really sensitive about his mother, you know, right, or about right. something. You know, I need to be a little more careful. So you can learn something. If they just slapped you, you know, then you'd you'd get into, uh, you know, you wouldn't learn much. Mm -hmm. It would degenerate back to fear and back to ego. That's a that's a fear reaction. The slap. See, that's a fear and ego reaction, and. We want to get about. We want to get above that. So the subtle is good for us. Definitely, it helps us. It helps us learn, and grow. So anyway, one of your questions. I'm reading your questions too. Mm -mm. So this. So this is virtual reality. You know, how is that different from physical reality? I think we got to that one pretty well, right? Yes. It's just information. Because there is no physical reality. People will actually ask me. They're like, "So what if it's virtual? Why? Why should that matter to me? Like, you know, uh, it's virtual. It's physical. I still have to go to work. You know, what's the big deal?" But I think I think we covered that because yeah, the big deal is the interaction and right. every choice you make in this reality. And you make thousands of choices every day, little choices, just to get up and go to, you know, go to work. That's a choice. You know, you make choices all the time. And, and uh, you know, somebody's rude to you and you get upset with them or you feel bad or you go sulk. Those are all choices. Nobody can make you angry. You choose to be angry. It's your choice to how, is how you react, you see. So you make all these choices and the quality of your choices depends on whether you evolve or de-evolve whether you're part of the solution, part of the problem, whether your life turns out to be one that's really pleasing and happy and you know, full of joy or whether your life sucks. So that's why it's important. That's why it makes a difference to you. Is this a virtual reality and how does it work? And what's this thing about consciousness? It makes a huge difference to you. Right. It's now you actually have, a, have an idea of why it is you make the decision to get up and the various things. Why are you here? What's the point? Well, the point isn't, I mean, the point is, yeah, you got to make money to pay the mortgage, right, and send the kids to school. But the point is also your interactions at work. Everything is a learning experience. Every time you interact with people, it's opportunities to learn and grow. If you miss the mortgage payment and, you know, the bank takes your house back or something, that's an opportunity to grow. It doesn't matter so much what happens. Right. What matters is... What you do with what happens. Right. Do you what learn from your lesson or do you... Exactly. Do you it's the choices it you make you. about what happens. Mm -hmm. But here all of us, you see, are in this mode of trying to manipulate reality to be the way we want it. You know, we manipulate everything so it turns out the way that makes us happy. Everybody's doing that. You know, we, you know the, what we tell the boss is to hope the boss likes it and will give us a raise. You know, we're trying to manipulate the boss 
to think well of us. So we'll go and get more money, you know, make more. You know, we try to manipulate our spouses. We try to manipulate our, our friends, our neighbors, our children, you know, our parents. Everyone's trying to manipulate everybody else to make their world the way they want it to be. And they just think if that physical world was just the way I wanted it to be, then I would be really happy if I were just rich and famous <laughs> and good looking. Everyone loved me and the I world would be didn't so good. Work at all. But see, they find out that wouldn't be the case. If you were rich and famous and good looking, you might have some fun for a while, but eventually your life would suck just the way it did before because you're not learning anything. Right. You're still fear based. And what are the quality you of your relationships? Yeah. That always it's just, requires work. Yeah. So the point is stop looking at the front end of how can I manipulate the world to be the way I want it and start looking at the now and and saying, how do I react? What are my choices? And are these the choices toward love and growing up? Are these productive, cooperative choices, caring choices, or are they fear-based choices, belief-based choices? That's your job, you see. So what does it matter? You know, virtual reality, it matters Everything, your, your whole life matters, you know, whether you succeed or fail, you know, matters. So there isn't anything about that you could learn about that matters any more than this to you personally. So what's in it for me? Everything, you know, the whole rest of your life. It's starting to actually do what you're supposed to be doing here and getting better at it so that your life gets better and better because this world is designed to give you feedback which is misery and unpleasantness and pain if you are fear motivated. If it's fear, ego, and belief that's motivating you, you are not going to be happy. So there's the answer to that one. That's, that's your job, everyone, and it's the whole universe's <laughs> job. So it might be yeah. worth paying a little attention to. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's important because it's personal. You know, it's not just science versus you know, But, yeah, there's... there's uh, you know, and how do I know this reality is virtual? What's the proof? Well, just one of the ways, there's, there's several ways, and science has a whole bunch more that are technical, but it's all the ways that scientists are now finding out that this is a virtual reality. Those are all the ways that tell you it's virtual. But let's just do something simple that everybody knows. What about your World of Warcraft guys? Let's say the World of Warcraft elves all get together and they try to figure out where did their universe come from? What would they find? They would find that it just happened one day. I mean, there wasn't anything, and then it was. And here we were, right? That's what they'd find out. <laughs> memory, memory goes right back to a certain place, and then it's a wall. You can't tell what happened. And if they were honest as Fredkin, they'd say, well, it must have come from other, because we can't, it didn't create itself. And, and they would be right. The other would be the server out in what we call the physical matter of reality, you see would be the source. Well, when we go back to our, to the beginning, we get to a big bang. There's nothing on the other side of that big bang. Suddenly there was just this ball of, of plasma and, it was, you know, and then we had a universe. Sounds Evolved familiar. The universe. Yes. Yeah, what happened there? Well, hey guys, there was a simulation. They started with this little ball of energy, a rule set, some constants, and they threw the, the run button. When they hit that run button, <laughs> threw the switch, it started to evolve. That was the bang. Launch. That, was the, that was the bang, yeah. In other, the run button was hit, and the evolution started. You see, that's where it comes from. So if you look at our own case, it's the same thing. You get right back to, yeah, I can see it started back at this point, but then you hit the wall. It's impossible, logically, for it to anything else to be on the other side of that. Not from here, anyway. Right, it has to like be from said, somewhere Like we said, it has else. to be from other. Okay, so you get back to the same place the elves got to. Right. Well, it just seemed all <laughs> of a sudden start here, and it must have come from other. You see? So if this were an objective, material, deterministic universe, it wouldn't have a launch point like the Big Bang. It wouldn't have a moment where there was nothing and then there was everything. No, it wouldn't, you see. It would have always been or has see, some other objective cause type. It type can't. You see, the point is there's a logical impossibility there. Right. You can't have a physical reality that just goes on because there is no start point. Right. See? 
Oh, it's just always been that way. Yeah, right. Well, what was, you know, be a little more specific about it's always been that way. Well, what you get to is that it has to start from nothing. See, you get there. There is no starting point. Right. Well, the physical reality always just comes from the physical reality, which just came from this physical. It's always been a physical reality. That's BS. You right. see, that's a belief. That sounds like somebody telling you, you know, about how you ought to go to church on Sunday. Right. You know, that's a belief. Because. That's not. Because they say something. Yeah, exactly. That's not, uh, that's not science. Right. So that's the point. You cannot justify a physical material reality's beginning. That's very funny because everyone it can't have a beginning. Everyone thinks that that's the more conservative, realistic, <laughs> yeah, down to earth right. thing. That there was just right. always this, but it, that's actually more intellectually inconsistent than it, this it, seemingly it far out. Uh, it's back to third grade logic. You right, see, right. that's in the same category <laughs> as well. Yeah, okay, it is virtual, but it computed itself. <laughs> It's the uh, basics that slip us up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Well, it's a physical reality, and, and it just, it, 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 uh, it's always been a physical reality. <laughs> because my see? big brother told me so. That's why. <laughs> yeah, so I believe it. See, it's a belief. That's a scientific belief, mm. you see. Mm. Well, it's, physical reality is all there is. Well, then where did the physical reality come from? Well, it just, it's all there is. It's an irrational, illogical belief that doesn't make sense so anyway yeah that's uh, that's why it's in, that's why it's important and people get so balled up with this virtual reality you know well, if I don't look at it then it disappears that's because they believe that it really was there in the first place right so then they have to think that it has to dif disappear it never was there there's nothing there it it's a data stream to you as consciousness it's right. a simulation. You're playing the game in the simulation. The simulation is sending you a data stream that defines your sensory input in this, sense, in this simulation. Just like it sends you a data stream that defines that elf's sensory input, what that elf sees, what that elf hears, what that elf feels. This is why I totally love your theory. It just brings you to such an interesting place where I've got science right here on this part of my brain and all these, uh, you know transcendental feelings and mystical yeah. views about reality and they're just like both sitting right in the same spot i'm like wow <laughs> yeah, that's good isn't it uh, yeah, yeah. I, i've already suddenly things the... come together and like the world starts to make sense yeah right? whereas before it seemed completely what's the word i'm looking for um impossible to reconcile uh, exactly exactly so this whole thing about if it's a virtual reality and i close my eyes it'll all disappear and that just doesn't make any sense. You're right. It doesn't make any sense. It was never there in the first place. It doesn't disappear. You just assume that it was there because you believe in a physical reality. That's your habit of thinking. So you think that, you know, if nobody goes to, you know, some, you know, if nobody is in a particular place, then that place is no longer being rendered. It's no longer in a 3D. The 3D reality doesn't exist. Right. It's just a data stream. Each of us live in our own unique reality. We each get our own unique data stream. Everybody's reality is a little different than others, but it's a multiplayer game, so we share the game board. We all see the Rocky Mountains out, you know, out west because this is a multiplayer game. That's where they are. That's where the rule set put them when this thing evolved and those mountains pushed up out of the magma. Right? And so the that's where the rule set. set put them, and that's where they stay because once it's here, it stays here. Right. Historical consistency. The historical consistency has to be there. Otherwise, things yeah. can't accumulate. There's too much right. chaos. People so, are like, what's going on? So that's, the, so that's why it works. So it's not that a virtual reality is this mystery thing that disappears when you don't look at it. <laughs> it's that it's that thing you're looking at isn't real. It's an illusion. Just like the elf on your screen isn't real. It's an illusion. The only thing that's real is consciousness itself the larger consciousness system is real okay now if you're an elf what they're saying is the only thing that's real is the server itself <laughs> because the server is their source right you see that's their source now to look at their source's source which is the reality that built the server you see that's like <laughs> us saying what's outside of consciousness right you see they can't 
get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, and it's not that you just haven't figured it out yet. It's an impossibility. It's illogical to think that you will ever know that. And you have to realize there are limits to knowledge. You cannot, you know, you cannot get outside that, that system. The elves, if they ever got, they may just intuit and they may say, well, it just suddenly started and it's, it's in other. So we know there's another system outside of us that computes this, this uh, World of Warcraft. And because we don't know what to call it, we'll call it the server. You know? We'll name other the server. <laughs> so, so they might intuit that a server exists, you see, but they can't really get into the server. Right. They're stuck because they're not of the server. We are of the server. The server's consciousness. We are consciousness. We can get out of this physical reality <laughs> and go tooling around and have a blast in the larger conscious system because we are consciousness. You see? So we're not the same because they're a, they, remember, are a programmed reality in a server. People program that in a server. We're not. We're something that evolved within the larger consciousness system. And, and we are intrinsic. We are intrinsically intrinsic. the same thing. That Exactly. So we, we can get connection. around in that larger conscious system where they can't get in their server. Right, because we just made them, and we didn't make them out of consciousness. They're just numbers moving around. Right. So they're stuck in there. Now, could our larger consciousness system be somebody else's server? Yeah, could be. And could that somebody else's server be somebody else's server? Yeah, could be. <laughs> Turtles all the no, way down no. kind of thing. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can do that. But it's just conjecture. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Right. But it's basically outside of what you will ever be able to know. Right. So you have to realize that it's just idle conjecture. Sure, it's possible. Mm -hmm. There may be lots of servers. You know, who knows? But eventually, you have to get to a beginning. You have to get to the system we talked about, which was this potential energy could just, you know, the state versus that state. Right. And, you know, we went through all of that. Virtually, you get to that, then is what is the start. Mm -hmm, and where mm -hmm. did that come from? Don't know. Right. Can't tell. Beyond, beyond my view as an intestinal bacterium, you see, beyond right. my view as an as a individuated unit of consciousness in this consciousness system. So there's just no point in going there. Or if you go there, go there with humor. Right. Because you're not going to say anything intelligent about that. Exactly. All you're going to do is wave your hands in the air and make up stuff. <laughs> and, there, you know, it's not going to be particularly fruitful to right. worry about it or go there. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. What matters is the decisions you make, is the choices you make here. That's what matters. Anything else? Peripheral. That's, doesn't that's really, very fascinating. Doesn't really matter. That's very interesting. So even for the even for the larger consciousness system itself, there's a limit it can't process outside of itself because it's consciousness. Yes. It has a limit, and even though it right. has a limit, it still has a very interesting job to do with itself, despite not exactly. being able to know these unknowable things. Exactly, it has its own limit. It has a boundary. Now it may be aware of its boundary, maybe, but. And it may even know something of that boundary. It may intuit, just like the elf says. It's, right. it's other, we'll call other the server, you know. Right. And then, then they'll pray to the server, you know, or something. <laughs> pray for more hit points from the server. <laughs> but, uh, so it might be aware of something else out there, but it's limited too. If there's then another thing outside of that thing, then it's impossible for the largest conscious system to know that. Right, right. So you see? We're really like the intestinal bacteria, you see. But here we are creating World of Warcraft. We're creating digital virtual realities. And one day when our computers are smart enough and we've understood the nature of consciousness enough, we'll have consciousness in our computers. <laughs> and then we'll be the server, right, for another consciousness system and whatever. It's a fractal Rea reality. Right, it's a fractal and it wants to make the new smaller part as advanced yeah. as the larger part. Uh, I guess it gains some kind of slack and synergy <laughs> from that. I'm, I'm not positive. But well, it starts up another 
it starts up another thing. Another of, layer. <laughs> another layer of evolution. Another layer of entities evolving their quality. Right. And it all rolls back to the same thing, you see. So even if there's a chain of 10 of these things, mm -hmm. and our largeness conscious system is just the number two for us, you know, mm -hmm. we... And maybe there's a three and a four and a five, and maybe there's ten of them. doesn't matter right. because what flows down through all of them is the purpose is to evolve. Right. Consciousness. Purpose is to become love because when we make these conscious characters, they'll be conscious. They'll have free will. What's their job? Their job will be to become cooperative, not destroy each other, not to, not to work out of fear, but to work out of cooperative. You see, they'll have the same mission. If the mission flows down. That's right. just the nature of consciousness. Because they'll experience chaos and they'll experience cooperation. And right. And they, love they will is the realization that one is the better direction than the other. Exactly. <laughs> Their lives will be better and everything will work better and happier if they. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a, that's the nature of consciousness. So whether we create it in our computers, it's created in our larger consciousness system, doesn't matter exactly where it starts or how many layers there are. We're in this layer. The only thing that's important is we make those choices such that we grow up and don't de-evolve, such that we become love, get rid of fear. So, see, it boils down to a very simple thing. We don't have to be concerned with, you know, levels and levels. Mm. It's, yeah, it's that's, just not our thing to be concerned with. It's just intellectual curiosity yeah, and getting it carried doesn't, away. Exactly. It doesn't, now, it doesn't mean those things aren't important. They may be important, right. just like... The sunshine and the nuclear fusion in the sun and the rain and the germination and all that is important to those internal ba intestinal bacteria. It's important. That's where their food comes from. Right. It's, it's important. You have a job and you own a refrigerator. You know, all those things are important to it, but it's past their, their ability to know anything about it. Right. So it doesn't mean those other things aren't important and that they may not have ramifications it just means that it's irrelevant. So long as the sun grows our food and warms our planet, it's okay if we yeah. don't fully understand the fusion going on inside of it. It's exactly. It's totally important, but not inherently important to what we're doing here. Um, right. It gets down to local issues. It always will get down to local issues. So the only thing that's really important to us are our choices and that they be the right choices. That's what's important because that's how we grow. That's how our larger consciousness system grows. And that's how we help each other grow. So it's a, that's what's important. And that kind of gets rid of a lot of confusion. A lot of people are in this, well, I just don't understand. The problem is so big. And who knows about this and that? And who's really in charge? And is there a God? And uh, see, it doesn't matter. It all boils down just to this solution. If you, if you want a God, call the larger consciousness system God, you know, because that's your creator, right? And you're made in its image. And, and the elves are made in our image. That's why they have two legs, two arms, you know, heads, you know, we're, they're made in our image. That's the way it works. Yes. So if that suits you, you know, then the larger consciousness system fills the bill. But it's just a natural system evolving on its way, trying to survive. That's uh, that's mind blowing. Yeah, I don't know. I've already read all this, and it was mind blowing the first time. And now talking to you about it, it's like going all over again. I feel like I'm reading the book for the first time again. <laughs> all right. So but, uh, um, we got that. What is the point of our lives? And um, yes. what reasons do you have to believe the theory is relevant? I think we've hit all of that. Better yes. science, better living. I figure uh, uh, we've probably only got enough time for one or two more questions. Actually. Um, so we've already got, uh, I guess we've kind of covered why is this theory seem so strange to people. We've kind of considered, we've covered that, obviously. Um, it flies in the face of science thinking objective as opposed yeah. to subjective. It flies in the face of our beliefs. Right. It flies in the face of our beliefs. People who are fearful do not like their beliefs being challenged. Yes. And the reason they have the belief in the first place is because they're fearful. If those two physicists on that panel weren't fearful of where that would take them. They would be curious. would crash their world. Yeah. They'd say, well, of course it must be another, you know? Yeah. Simulation can't, can't simulate itself. Or they would have at least not opposed it, you know? They would have at least been uh, like, oh, well, tell me more. Instead, they're like, not no, happening. No, no. Can't no. be. No, you're wrong. <laughs> there has to be another explanation. 
You know, yeah, particles can't be probability distributions. There has to be another explanation. You want everything so, closed ended. Everything has to be closed ended. So that's why. So it's a, there are a lot of beliefs out there, and the beliefs aren't just intellectual beliefs, these are cultural beliefs. That's why people say, I don't get it that if you look away, it disappears. See, it's a belief that it exists there and is hard and solid and it exists. So how is it that it doesn't exist when, when nobody's looking? doesn't make sense to them. Well, that's because they have this belief that there's this physical thing that exists. And now they're trying to understand how you make this physical thing that exists not exist anymore by not looking at it. And it just doesn't compute. And they say, bullshit, doesn't work. You see? Well, they're stuck because they have this belief. Mm -hmm. Once they get the idea that every person, every conscious entity, every bumblebee is getting its own data stream. Anything that's conscious has a data stream, and that data stream is defining its reality. And that data stream defines that tree or that building or the inside of your house or the other side of the planet or the dark side of the moon or whatever else, you see? That, and if that data stream doesn't show you that, you know, it doesn't well, have to. Yeah, dark side of the moon, that's a good one. Does the, does the system have to render the dark side of the moon? No. <laughs> Unless there's somebody that it has a data stream that's over there looking at the dark side of the moon, then it has to render it. Right. It just renders the effect. And they say, oh, well, if the dark side of the moon isn't being rendered, then the moon would wobble. It'd only be half there. No, no, no. We're talking rendering. We're right. not talking about making mass. We're right. talking about rendering data to a consciousness. Mm -hmm. You see? There is no moon. <laughs> you see? The moon's just information. <clears throat> Reality's information. Mm -hmm. So because they have these beliefs, they just have all these problems. Well, if the dark side of the moon wasn't there, the moon would wobble. It would fall over. It'd only be half a moon, and it wouldn't do this and that. You know, that can't be true. They're missing the point. So that's why it's so hard. That's why it's so difficult to get this idea of virtual reality is we have these gut level, blood and sinew and bone level beliefs in the way the world is and our mind just right away says, oh, the moon would wobble. That can't be true, you see? And it's because it's the belief that's catching you up. Oh, when I turn around, the woods goes away. That can't be true. The world is a convincing illusion. <laughs> Yes, it's a very convincing illusion. Uh, I guess it so, has to be well, to keep the historical continuity going and so forth. Yeah, people consider it strange for that reason. Scientists are particularly frightened of it because science is this objective thing. We only do objective things. The truth has to be objective, has to be physical, has to be a part of this physical universe. Anything else is bull. Right? Anything else is, is some weak-minded, uh, you know, flower child having <laughs> hallucination. Too many drugs when they were in school, you know, this sort of thing. So all of that stuff is pseudoscience, baloney. It has to be physical. Well, they're coming to the conclusion it's a virtual reality, guys. It's not physical. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's just information. And then there's the, there's the logic that says it's an other. Other is non-physical because it has to be outside this physical universe, which defines everything physical for us. It's this physical universe. So it's outside. It's not physical. And you can say, well, yeah, but it's outside, but it's some other physical thing. <laughs> well, you're just gaming words. Right. right? Physical is just, just some authority yeah. word you throw. Like, it means it's right. real. It's physical. I swear. It's another right. physical. Yeah. So that's the same thing. You know, if it's outside of this physical universe, then to us, it's not physical like the server's not physical to the elf you know? they don't engage so, it they don't bump into it ever they they never no, bump into the server no we never in their bump reality into yes yeah in their reality yeah. there is no server doesn't exist there it's non-physical in their reality that world of warcraft map is what's physical you see so that's people the scientists particularly whose whole careers are on this scientific method physical repeatable Everybody sees the same thing. Oh, subjective. That's BS. There is, you know, all reality is objective. You know, even when 80% of their own life is subjective, <laughs> you know, the relationships with their, with their children, with their wives, so who they marry, <laughs> you know, all that. Yeah, that was all objective, right? That all came out of a computer. No, you know, their whole life is lived in a subjective space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the pain they have is subjective. I mean, everything that matters to them in their life is subjective. The only thing that's objective is the stuff. 
you know, it's the props, not the actors, you know. Right. The props are objective. So they're saying the only thing in this theater are the props. Right. It's the, it's the building and the props, you know. And then there's us, and we have this consciousness, but that's a hard problem. We just don't know how. To, right. We can't explain that, you right. know. So it's just the props and everything else is BS. <laughs> so for them to come to the conclusion that <laughs> it's, in, it's created in other and other is non-physical is just like, you know, hitting them in the face with a dead fish, right? <laughs> That's just unpleasant. That tears their whole thing up. That sounds like religion. Yeah. What do you mean? Non-physical. There's these non-physical forces out there someplace who have made us to be this way. And, yeah. you know, they said, uh-oh, yeah, made sounds like... Made us in like, their image for a yeah, purpose. Yeah, made us in their image and for their purpose. And, you know, <laughs> and we need to be good little boys and girls. <laughs> You know, so scientists, that's just like the fingernails go down the blackboard. You see, that's everything that they for 300 years have tried to avoid and get rid of. And you know, have, the separation well, of the church reasons, and the science. Yes. You know, the church owned all the science and then finally real science broke away from theology. And now yeah, it's like, you're telling back. me <laughs> it's an other, come on. Any answer but that is acceptable. That's why the two physicists sitting there on a the panel say, I don't think so, uh, but uh, now, let's go on. That is an ironic mission worthy of PMR. <laughs> they try so hard to find the objective truth, get away from religion, and they finally crack the reality itself. And what do they find? Something ethereal. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right back to all that stuff that they've been dissing and calling uh, you know, baloney all these years. So that's why it's so hard for science. It's not just that the science guys, you know, have a, have a big belief. They do have a belief, but they've invested their whole investment in, we're scientists. We don't deal in, you know, woo-woo stuff. We deal in <laughs> facts. You see, we're not woo-woo guys. And then they find out that their whole universe, their whole reality was made in woo-woo other. <laughs> see, that's a bitter pill to swallow. And most of them just say, no, won't go there. All right, I'll, I'll tell you, the physics does say that this is just information, but, well, we just don't know. Yeah, you know? And we're, we're not going to so say they just what stop that means. That, yeah, they just stop right there at the wall and say, well, we'll wait for some other knowledge to come along that explains this in terms of our universe. And, and uh, they stop. So that's where we are now. Physicists have gotten the first step. The second step is the tough one. They don't want to agree with Fredkin that it has to come from other and that other is non-physical. And it's like, you know, pulling out all their teeth and, you know, driving bamboo shoots under their fingernails. You know, it's just wrong in yeah, their mind. Like, no. Just just at the, again, the blood and sinew level, it's just wrong. Oh. It can't be that way. Believe me, in making this film I talk to a lot of my friends and some of them are like yeah I totally feel that you know like I've had these dreams that are premonitions and stuff I've always felt like reality had more to it and then I have other friends who are like oh you know, this is bullshit <laughs> like, uh, you found a scientist who agrees with you I don't know that doesn't that, I'm not convinced you know yeah that's right so it, it just tears up the fabric of their reality so much that it's so opposite of what they've been working for for centuries and what they take pride in as scientists. And it's, um, it's a big problem. And it'll take time. You know, they're not going to take a step. It's been, there's been evidence that it's a virtual reality for decades. And they're just now getting around to saying that in public. So it, who knows how long it'll take for them to get around to agree with Dr. Fredkin that it was computed in other. And then, how many years is it going to take them to get to the next step, which is consciousness is the computer? Right, that's so, the other. So, the other so we is got, you. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got those. We got those three big paradigms to get over to get there. And uh, the first one, well, we got three more. We had four big paradigms, but I think we've cracked the first one, which is this is a virtual reality. Or it's, at least it's cracking pretty, right. pretty, pretty dramatically right now. That's cracking. So I think we're, we've got that one. We've got three more. And uh, who knows? Maybe in a decade, maybe in 100 years. It's hard to say. There's a lot of energy built up to oppose woo-woo other having any 
part to do with reality. Uh, it's part of our it's part of our lesson, our learning curve, I yeah. guess. We uh, we had to we had to try all this subjective stuff. We had to try all this spiritual stuff, and uh, just shakes out how it does in the end. Yeah, right. We had the intuition, you see, mm -hmm. because it's there. We have this thing inside of us that says what we're supposed to be doing here is growing up, becoming love, you know, spiritual growth. This is important to me. We have to grow our, our character. We have to become moral. We have, you know, this is the right way to go. We have all that because that's true. So people had that at the intuitive level, you see? It's not just so then the props. They, so, right. So then it's not just the props. They know that, that there's something else that's more, it's more significant you know, the relationship they have with their significant other, their children, is more important than, you know, the stuff, yeah, the props. matter. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. They know this on a level. So then you get people who do get little bits and pieces of it, like the Buddha. And he says, yeah, all this other stuff's illusion, and we really are supposed to love each other. And you get this, and you get the Christians who say, God is love, you know. So you have this coming at you from all different angles, from all the religions. And uh, I'm, giving, <laughs> I'm giving Buddha all the, all the uh, breaks here. But, you know, it's coming from all sides because intuitively it's a truth. And then you get the science that says, that truth took us through witch burning, through, you know, all kinds of silliness and violence and nastiness. There was a lot of fear and, and bad stuff there. We're dealing just with the physical facts. You know, we're disassociating ourselves from all of that stuff. So at that point, they declared uh, anything that was not objective to be BS. Right. Pretty much. And, so uh, they declared 80% of their own lives, you know, <laughs> to be BS. And it's mostly true, you know, that's, they do, because most of a person's life is their subjective part of their life, not the objective part, you know, that's not the part that's meaningful. So they've done this, and they've put so much into it, and they've made a lot of progress. I mean, look at technology and science and where it's gone and the health benefits and the, you know, the better air, worse air, I mean, it depends. We got, you know, we are able to fix things pretty well. We have things like, uh, you know, antibiotics. I mean, there's lots of things that have been really nifty because the scientists have focused on the physical, objective world. It's not a bad thing to do. It's a good thing to do. So we're not saying it was bad that they did that. It's a wonderful thing they did that. But now they need to get a bigger picture, a bigger reality and say, yeah, well, you know, there is this physical world and it is important to understand it. But we got to deal with other, too. Yes. Because that's where... That's where our intuition lies. That's mm -hmm. where the 80% of our life lives. Right, right. You know, that's, that's what's important to us. That's what makes us happy or not happy. That's what makes us in pain or miserable or not is that part. It's not the objective part that does that. You know, it's that subjective part. So they get, you know, if they get to that point where they can open up and take in a bigger world and not be terrified that we're going to go back to hunting witches and, and uh, you know, Having being, spiritual authorities instead yeah, of right. being, logical yeah. authorities. Exactly. So it's a tough transition for them and for a lot of other people as well. We don't want to go back there to the bad old days. Right. <laughs> you know? We had the we had the high priests of religion who told everybody what to believe. Now the scientists are the high priests and they're telling everybody what to believe. And everybody likes it better because we have <laughs> You know, antibiotics. We have radios and televisions, and we can communicate over the internet. So we say this is better than the other way. We don't <laughs> want to go back there, but they have to realize that we can go on. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go back there. We can realize that there is this spiritual component, this non-physical component to us, and that our purpose is basically to evolve the quality of our consciousness. And we can realize that without delving back into fear. See all the burning of the witches and the you know and the and the priests, you know, being doing ugly things and so on, you know, the sacrifices, you know, all the all right. that stuff, all that is fear, ego, and belief. Yep. Well, we're supposed to be growing out of it. This this other thing wants to take us away from that, not back to it. You see, we don't want to go back to all that fear, right? Ego and belief. So they have to realize there's a bigger picture, and unless you get that big picture, you're stuck with the fear, ego, and belief model you're living in. 
That's... You got to get to that other and realize we got to move on past that. Otherwise, science will hold us here in this belief, fear, and whatever, in this physical reality forever. If we don't grow up, we've got to take the next step. We've got to grow beyond that and realize that what's important is, you know, the quality of our consciousness is whether or not we're love or not. It's our choices that we make, how we're evolving. That's the key. And once you get that, everything else works good. Which is, and that's not going back to the bad old days yeah. when, you know, your first child had to be sacrificed on the altar right. you know, to make some God happy or, uh, you know, you had to do other sorts of mean things to keep the, you know, the spirits uh, in your favor. Right. You know, we don't want to go back there. That's not the point of it. The point is just the opposite. We're trying to get away from there and we can't get away from there until we embrace other, realize what's going on and what the nature of, our, of reality and our purpose is, then we can begin to move on. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I think we've covered all your points. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just want to say thanks for the interview. Um, thank you for your work, The Big Theory of Everything, which is a joy to read. And, of course, thank you for allowing me and Elliot the opportunity to make this film. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We'll and we'll talk again another time. I'll, I'll see you soon, Tom. Colorful. Well, mostly they have this intuitive thing that knows the truth. Yes. They've got the intuitive answer, and they feel that. Mm -mm. But there's so many charlatans and hustlers trying to pitch that at them right. that they immediately, yeah, right, theory of everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody's love. See you later. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so it's, yeah. So it's a hard, it's a hard sell.